בוקר טוב. אני סיד לופידס, ואני מגיע מניו יורק כנאמן חדש. אני מאוד מתכבד להציג בפניכם את שר הביטחון לשעבר משה בוגי יעלון. באירוע הפתיחה שלנו ביום ראשון בערב הוצג השר יעלון בכך שהוא אמר שאין צורך להציגו, ולמרות זאת התבקשתי לתת דברי פתיחה. אחרי מגוון של תפקידים בצה"ל, ב-2002 הפך בוגי יעלון לרמטכ"ל של צה"ל. ב-2008 הוא הצטרף לתנועת הליכוד והפך להיות שר החוץ וסגן שר החוץ. ב-2013 הוא היה, הפך לשר הביטחון. ב-2016, כאשר התפטר מן הממשלה, הצטרף ל-INSS והפך להיות עמית מחקר בכיר. הסוגיה הנוכחית של הפרסומים האחרונים כוללים מאמר חשוב של השר כיצד להשכין שלום במזרח התיכון, מדוע התנועה מלמטה למעלה עדיפה על זו מלמעלה למטה. תודה רבה. Is everything okay there? Good morning. Chairperson of the INSS, Frank Louis, the Director General, Major General in Reserve, Amos Yadlin, my friend to the researchers of the Institute, members of the Board of uh, Trustees, Yedidim Yekarim, me, הממסד הביטחוני בארצות הברית, הגנרל אלן כאן, פטריאוס ואנשי הסגל הדיפלומטי. אני אדבר בעברית הבוקר. And I'm about to uh, discuss this morning that which I included in my uh, introduction for the strategic evaluation of the INSS as a research fellow in the Institute. about uh, our domestic issues or the leadership as a critical component of the resilience and national security of our country. And I've been recently following up uh, on the public discussion concerning the publication of the State Comptroller's report concerning Operation Protective Edge. Leadership is not afraid of the publication of a report, even if it is critical toward it, uh, and even if it disagrees with it. And hence, I support the publication of this report, uh, you know, short of certain segments that w could undermine the security of the State of Israel. Leadership does not do politics during a military operation or in its aftermath. Leadership navigates a military operation with discretion and uh, responsibility and is not led by public opinion polls. If we had operated in protective edge according to the polls of a public that, you know, uh, is tempted by irresponsible slogans uh, during uh, the fight, Uh, and some of it can be uh, heard today, who would have been mired in this uh, Gaza quagmire or, or today, two and a half years after leaving uh, Gaza, we would have uh, come out with our tail between our hind legs. Protective edge operation was a very, very tough one, like any previous war before that. Many lost their lives and many were injured and their lives were altered forever. The bodies of, uh, you know, Lieutenant Golden and uh, Major... Uh, Owen Shaul were not yet returned to the uh, uh, state of Israel, and it is incumbent upon us to make sure they are returned. But we have reached this campaign fully prepared to thwart the attack of the thousands of rockets that were launched at us, and we indeed have accomplished this. We were there to thwart the very tough, you know, terror attacks concocted by Hamas against our forces from the sea, from the air, and through the tunnels, and we did that. We defined precisely before the operation, what uh, goals it had, and we achieved them all. 
that was an armistice that was achieved according to our conditions without succumbing to any uh, demand of Hamas. And most important, since then, Hamas has been a weak and deterred. The South enjoys an unprecedented quiet in the past two and a half years after the operation. This is an example of responsible, balanced leadership that has very stable hands on the helm, even when there are politicians who are firing within the APC in the holiest of holy, namely the cabinet, during the operation and after the operation, and actually incite the public. Regretfully, I see this morning once again politicians who have no red lines. This time, by actually violating the uh, law, by actually leaking distorted uh, quotes uh, from the cabinet in order to get a few more likes uh, on Twitter or Facebook. It's not hard to imagine who is there behind it, but the ones who are doing it are not, you know, worthy of becoming leaders. Leadership says and decides uh, the right thing to do and not what is popular for a particular point in time. Leadership should have been should have said to the Amona residents, those pioneer uh, Amona residents, that which has been said to them to begin with. No government has ever approved your settlement and your settlement cannot be approved in uh, you know ret retrospect and no law will be able to get you to live on this uh, hill. And we are going to help you find, you know, uh, a legal solution for your settlement. And a proper leadership would have insisted upon it, even if it weren't popular. But it is true and would not change its mind and politically maneuver uh, to reach a, a voting for the arrangement law. And those who uh, voted for it said that it was not constitutional and might lead us to the international uh, um, uh, court in The Hague. And in the meantime, as the Prime Minister hinted two days ago, we paid for this politics, the price of not receiving the American veto over the resolution of the United Nations, which is shameful in and of itself. A proper leadership would follow the policy of the government and make sure the settlement does that too. It does not confuse uh, an entire public by actually, you know, uh, sort of turning a blind eye on the rule of law. Proper leadership is not afraid of criticism from those who say those who are supposed to be part and parcel of what we call checks and balances of our democratic regime, like the media, the Supreme Court, and civil servants. Uh, the way these three elements uh, are treated as elites that would not allow to rule, hence need to be weakened and silenced or controlled, such leadership is not the right leadership for a democratic country. The media has to do its own soul searching, especially after the publication of the scripts of the talks between the prime minister and one of the owners of the media outlets. And it is exactly because of this and other, you know, uh, faulty phenomena in the media, there's a great deal of importance in a credible public, you know, media. And, you know, the important thing is to uh, bolster it, not to destroy it. The Supreme court? Well, you can argue over it. You can argue with it uh, concerning various rulers that it handed down. But a proper leadership would not roll over the responsibility to the Supreme Court, like in the case of Amona or the drying of homes in Beit El, and then has the entire public uh, go against it. This is not leadership. This is cheap politics that is very dangerous because uh, between the awe of uh, the rule, you know, we have to live together. And last but not least are the elites, which do not allow the government to rule those civil servants uh, in uh, uniform and without uniform. Uh, leadership is not afraid of voicing professional opinions that run counter to its own uh, views. Ultimately, it makes decisions and it is incumbent upon that leadership to carry out the responsibility. But when the standard for hiring or uh, dismissing a civil servant is a you know, personal loyalty, not, uh, you know, national loyalty. And when uh, the political and the professional opinion is not uh, necessary, we enter a slippery slope that leads us to making the wrong decisions. Leadership is not, you know, you know, actually uniting uh, the people because of, you know, uh, elements of intimidation. It has to unite the people 
based on integration of every element of society, not through delegitimization and intimidating one part of the population against another. The uh, public discourse in the social media actually incites hatred to one another. Jews against the Arabs and Arabs against the Jews and Jews against the Jews. In this case, in, instead of actually integrating the Arab minority within the uh, Israeli society, the right wing against the left wing and the left wing against the right wing. The right wing is uh, violent, is pre presented as uh, violent, and the left wing as a traitor. I know these as well as those, and they're all loyal Zionist citizens, law abiders uh, who uh, fight shoulder to shoulder shoulder in order to uh, defend the country, even when they disagree uh, in their opinions. Delegitimization uh, of the ultra-Orthodox is another uh, negative phenomenon. Even after it was proven that the right way to recruit the ultra-Orthodox to the IDF is by creating the conditions that encourage such recruitment and not by forcing them and uh, using an incited discourse. The numbers speak for themselves. In this recent year of recruitment, over two 2,500 uh, ultra-Orthodox soldiers were recruited. Not too long ago, this number amounted to zero. This year, the target is 3,200, and those who fit into the military service after they are discharged from it find jobs in high numbers in the uh, labor market, and that amounts to over 90 percent. Well, were we before that, that, you know, the uh, discourse of delegitimization using different hateful uh, slogans. And there are politicians who actually uh, inflame uh, uh, the situation further. The Ashkenazi uh, versus the Sephardic, uh, after we've reached such great uh, a scope of uh, integration. And politicians are using this to cover up for the failures, expanding the gap between the rich and the poor in the state of Israel and undermining the middle classes because of the cost of living uh, in, co in comparison with the uh, wages. Proper leadership should rise to these challenges and not cover them up with uh, discourse of animosity. It should give personal example as well ethical conduct. One didn't elaborate too much on this topic, but definitely we deserve to have leadership that should not be investigated by the police. There's no leadership without the trust bestowed by the people in it. This is something that I learned in the 48 years since I was uh, conscripted to the IDF in most of them, if not if in all of them, I served the country and I led people. The trust that the people have in its leadership is a component of our national resilience and our national security, especially as a state and as a nation. There are many challenges that lie ahead of us. The security challenges, the contemporary ones and the ones before and the ones to come will test our ability to stay united as a society whether it, that has to do with t waves of terror or rockets and missiles that are launched at us, our ability to withstand that as a society is what is put to the test. This is why it is yet another reason why it's so important to have leadership that we trust. And this is why we need leadership that has vision that navigates according to a compass and not uh, to a wind vine and mostly bad winds that it actually uh, incites. Uh, you know, a very balanced uh, policy in the security realm that unites the people and does not, you know, cause strife, that integrates every sector and every ethnic group, and one which does not exclude or isolate, one that, uh, you know, closes the gap between the haves and the have-nots, one which strengthens the periphery, strengthens, strengthens the weak in the society and the family as a key component of the resilience of our society. Yes, we do need a different leadership, one that we can trust and believe in. Thank you very much.